Hi there, Tracy from Kazadan's Equestrian. Welcome to this week's video where I talk about why sometimes the decision to euthanize a horse that has suffered a broken leg or a major leg injury is the most humane thing to do and why this decision is made. Okay, before I go on with the topic, please, if you're new to the channel, welcome, but don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell, share the video around, and also make any comments that you might like. So this is quite a controversial topic, and it's normally more controversial for people who are not involved with horses when they hear a horse getting put down because it's broken its leg. Now, I'm going to encompass any other major injury in this, like a, a full suspensory or ligament tears, any major injury of the leg that equates to about as um, significant as a break. Obviously, this can be hard for some people to understand, and the reason being that for us, it seems like such an easily surmountable injury break our leg, we put a cask in it, we don't walk on it for a while and all is good. So the lack of understanding on why this is such a complicated thing for a horse is important to address. There are lots of reasons, however, I've split them really into um, physical problems and then tying these in the end with the mental, emotional problems that can occur by horses and why it can be more humane to pursue the euthanasia um, path rather than recovery. So first up, let's have a look at the size of the horse, the size of its body, the incredible mass there compared to how fine those limbs are. Now you only need to take a look at a person and the size of their, um, their body compared to their legs and notice that the horse is carrying an awful lot of weight on these very fine legs. The first thing is that that makes it really difficult for a horse to carry its entire weight on three remaining legs. Below the knee, the horses have next to no muscle and they contain a lot of bones that are kind of fragile and complicated. These bones are very much like in our wrist, our knuckles and our hand, where there is an awful lot of bones in comparison to further up in the body. Front limbs are even more problematic because the horse carries way over a half of its weight on the forelimbs. So again, one of those forelimbs breaking really causes a problem for the other leg and I'll discuss why shortly. The most common fractures or injuries do occur in the lower limb of the horse. These are normally from um, kick outs, falls, trips. And yes, sometimes they're actually a accumulation of stress injuries, which means that the horse maybe hasn't been managed properly. Without doubt, some fractures can be repaired and it is feasible to treat the horse for these. And when it's feasible, most people with horses with a lower leg injury or a break will treat that. A fracture that occurs above the knee is very, very difficult to repair on a horse. Um, and also more complicated fractures. Sometimes even with these tiny bones, a bit like our wrist, as I said, um, these bones can really shatter. So getting them to reheal is a really big deal. So obviously when we break a leg, our focus is on keeping the weight off, keeping it very still and allowing the bone to mend itself. Often, obviously, it requires surgery as well. And this is the case with horses. You can do surgery to help repair this leg, but it really depends on how significant the break is. And the significance isn't necessarily how bad, it can also be the location. One of the big issues around a fractured leg for a horse in terms of treatment is the amount of pain relief they're going to need. It is incredibly painful for a horse. Um, imagine that you were only holding your weight on one of your toes and that toe broke, so you had to maintain entire weight on one of the other toes. And this is kind of the situation that the horse is left in. How we manage pain relief in a horse, however, is quite tricky because I can't say to the horse, I'm gonna give you so much pain relief you feel no pain, but we don't want you to move. So the more pain relief we give to the horse, the better they feel, the more they move, the more damage they do. So this is a really critical um, part of the treatment to get a good balance in. 
One of the other things that bone repair requires is a really good blood supply. Now I've spoken in my other videos about the hoof mechanism. The way the blood pumps down to the horse's legs, remembering they've got this enormous body, no real muscles on the leg, especially in the lower limb. So what happens is the hoof expands and contracts. As that occurs, it draws the blood flow to the bottom of the leg. So if we're now not moving the limb that needs healing, we really do have compromised blood flow as well. And this affects the healing and makes this healing take a lot longer than it would for us. One of the ways they do look at treating horses and do sometimes, especially with short term issues, is putting the horse in a sling. Now there's a whole lot of issues around that. One is the sores, a bit like bed sores. You can't really rotate a horse in the same way in a sling as you do a person in a bed. But it's also the stress on the horse of the inability to move. And quite often a horse will struggle because it is so against their nature to not move that they struggle so much they end up injuring themselves in other ways. So the sling's not a great option. Obviously the calmer the horse is and the, the horse that's more accepting of things being done to it is more likely to be able to cope with a rehabilitation campaign. However, it really is against the horse's grain to stand still. So it is very, very tricky. Then if we're not using the sling, the horse needs to maintain its weight on the other three legs, which means double load on one. So let's use the front legs as an example. The front leg is then taking well over the horse's weight. If you put your hand around the bottom of the leg and feel how thin that bone is, in comparison to the average horse weight and average thoroughbred of around 500 kilos, then that's a lot of weight to have on that thin digit. And it causes a lot of problems in the supporting limb. What can happen in the supporting limb is that the pressure is put on the laminae, which is what um, connects the coffin bone to the hoof wall. It is the same sort of thing that occurs in laminitis, and in fact it is laminitis. So have a look at my video on that if you don't know what that is. But this is incredibly painful as well. So now, if your horse that takes can't take weight on one leg, transfers it to the other, and it gets a recovery laminitis, then it's in excruciating pain for it to keep weight on that leg at all. It's likely to lay down and not want to move at all. And laminitis in itself, if it escalates, is can be fatal. So this is one of the one of the really important things. Um, they're also at higher risk to infection than we are. One, because of the blood flow um, and also the thinness of their legs. So it's a little more likely for a sort of fracture to protrude um, the bones and the tendons and maybe create an exposure point to infection. And now we combine that with a lack of blood flow because the leg isn't moving and they really are quite prone to infections in this. Not to mention that this is extremely costly for the average horse owner. It's costly for everybody, but um, the average horse owner is unlikely to be able to afford the cost of the surgery and the rehabilitation of the horse. And this must be taken into consideration because as you can imagine, it's a mammoth task to try to attempt to rehabilitate a horse from a broken leg. Um, and if you don't have the full resources available to you, then it's, it's a, a cruel path to begin down. A good example of this is the um, Kentucky Derby winner, Barbaro, who fractured his leg and the owners did everything. He had immediate surgery, the best care that money could buy. He developed then laminitis on the other supporting limb and in the end had to be euthanized for humane reasons. Now, that horse, eight months after the injury, with every bit of time, energy and money thrown at it, still had to be euthanized. So sometimes making that call earlier is a better one to make. Yes, the leg can be repaired through surgery, but as I said, it's very inhibitive due to the requirement for the painkillers, the high level of antibiotics, the cost and the recovery. Often this stuff is associated only with professional sport horses and in particular race horses. Now, I guess the most recent was one of the Olympic horses in eventing 
who sustained a massive suspensory or it was a it was certainly a lower leg ligament injury that was unrepairable and you can see now why it's more humane to euthanize the horse than it is to not but let's not imagine that the only time a horse injures itself is when it's performing professionally for a person horses injure themselves in the paddock they injure themselves in the wild often and they can injure themselves while going through sport are there poor management practices that could maybe be improved to reduce the risk of this yes of course but let's have a look at the management practices as opposed to the industry and the sport that these occur in one of the problems and i've spoken about bone growth quite often in many of my videos and how it remodels um, it is normal to get micro fractures in a bone same with us same with our children who we make play sport and the idea is that the bone remodels then into a stronger version of itself if we don't allow that bone remodeling then we start to get stress fractures if we don't listen to the stress fractures a bigger fracture can occur so this stuff is important and it's why I harp on about any lameness getting a proper diagnosis and treating it seriously right from the beginning. Quite often the cynics, um, mostly outside but sometimes inside of the horse industry, assume that this is a money related issue. But as you can see, even with money thrown at him, Barbaro still had to be euthanized after eight months of trying to rehabilitate him. So now to the, I guess, mental issues that um, rehabilitation will pose to the horse. Let's not forget the importance of the fact that the horses are a prey animal. They've survived so long because they're so good at reacting very quickly with movement to any perceived threat. Now, what do they perceive as a threat? Any unusual sound, sight, smell, etc. So now we're gonna put a horse in a position where they literally cannot move because of their break or we restraining them and they understand as a prey animal at that point that when a threat appears that there is no way for them to escape. So this is going to affect them mentally very badly and at times we've known of horses to just give up and die at this point. If we do something simple by just immobilizing the leg, which often happens like green stick fractures and more minor fractures are treated like this and are treatable and horse owners do treat these. But with the immobilization, you're still putting a little bit of a strain on the horse because they know they can't move very fast. They know they can't escape threat and nor can they lay down and sleep properly. And as we know from one of my other videos, that horses do need to lay down to get really good functional REM sleep. So this inability to move is really, really, really tough on a horse's psyche. Quite often, a horse will resist being restrained from movement quite violently. Um, and in fact, even waking up from an anesthetic after a very um, complex surgery, and finding their inability to move, they can thrash around so much that it undoes all of the good that the surgery has done. And that is simply due to the fact that they are so incredibly stressed about their inability to move. So let's take all of that information and put it into um, context with some of the euthanasia practice guidelines from the American Veterinary Association. These guidelines are put in place to help to make a decision about whether keeping the horse alive and treating it or euthanasia is the most humane option. So what the American Association of Equine Practitioners says is that one, a horse should not have to endure continuous or unmanageable pain from a condition that is chronic and incurable. A horse should not have to endure medical or surgical condition that means it, it has a hopeless chance of survival. A horse should not have to remain alive if it has an unmanageable medical condition that renders it a hazard to either itself or its handlers. A horse 
should not have to receive continuous analgesic medication for the relief of pain for the rest of its life. A horse should not have to endure a lifetime of continuous individual box stall confinement for prevention or relief of unmanageable pain and suffering. Now, if we put those guidelines into context with how hard it is for a horse to one, recover, and two, cope with the rehabilitation, I hope this gives a lot more context around why a horse is often euthanized with a bad break to its leg. A couple of points, please don't forget that horses do survive and do get treated for broken legs. We just don't get media frenzy over that. And number two, it's not just sport horses that endure these injuries. Again, we simply don't get media frenzy over that. I hope this has helped and cleared up some confusion. Thanks for listening to this video. I feel that it's a really important one to get out there, not on the only in the horse community, but in the wider community, so they get a better understanding when us horse people make some decisions that they don't understand. Thanks for watching. Please again, don't forget, subscribe, like, click the notification bell so that you do get a notification when I release a video next week. Make sure you comment and share this around. Thank you for listening.